mitochondria provide the energy that runs everything in your body. Don't you think you should give your mitochondria what they need to operate at their best? In today's video, I'm gonna tell you how to do exactly that. Hi, I'm Sage, thanks for joining me. I'm here to be your source of cutting edge, actionable health information to help put you in control of your health destiny. Please support us by hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. It doesn't cost you a penny and is more helpful than you can imagine to our tiny family business. I love supporting you guys on your health journey, not just with educational information, but also with a nutritional fuel to help you achieve your goals. You can find a link down in the description to our website with the world's healthiest gourmet chocolates, delicious elixir blends, and powerful adaptogenic herbs. One of the best things you can do to take your life to the next level is to upgrade your mitochondria. These are making ATP. This is pure cellular energy and it fuels everything that's happening in your body. So let's take a look at some of the herbs and supplements and lifestyle practices that can optimize your mitochondria and ATP production. The first one I wanna look at is cordyceps. This is something most people consider a mushroom. Technically, it's a synergistic family of fungi and it is found to stimulate mitochondrial ATP generation. It contains a compound in it called cordycepin, which has a huge impact on mitochondria and their production of ATP. Another herb we want to think about here is Thai black ginger. It's not very well known. It's a distant cousin of the ginger that you're probably more familiar with. In the Journal of Natural Medicines, black ginger was found to improve GLUT4 levels, which is improving glucose absorption into the cell, improving how the cell uses energy. So more energy is made and more mitochondria can then be produced, making even more energy. So it has just this building snowballing effect. You have more energy, you can make more mitochondria. You got more mitochondria, you can make more energy. Now you can make more mitochondria and it just keeps going. And then in the supplement department, we want to look first at ubiquinol. This is the active form of CoQ10 and this transports electrons and protons into the mitochondria and drives ATP synthesis. Then you can also look at some NAD boosters. Um, NAD plays a very key role in the formation of ATP. And so some of the top ones here are nicotinamide riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide. These are in the very early stages of research on them. They are available to consume. Great if you can get them in liposomal form for optimal absorption. But you know, every month there's a new study that comes out on one and people start saying, oh, nicotinamide riboside is better now. Oh no, nicotinamide mononucleotide is better. And they, they just keep both kind of advancing in their research that's been done on them. They're both very popular. I so far am preferential to nicotinamide mononucleotide, but you never know that could always shift in the future as some new fascinating research comes out. Magnesium is also very important in the production of ATP. And so I love taking magnesium glycinate for its overall bioavailability, the fact that it doesn't make you have to go to the bathroom and its effects on stress as well because of the glycine that the magnesium is put together with there. Then another herb here to think about is also gynostemma. It's a leaf that grows in Southern China, very powerful for the mitochondria and energy production as well. And berberine, which is an, uh, a compound that can come from many different herbs. Most commonly in supplement form, it will come from Indian barberry. Then in terms of lifestyle practices, it's basically about exposing your body to forms of stress that it can then recover from short-term stress and long-term recovery. So this would be like red light therapy or going into an infrared sauna or doing high intensity interval training exercise or going into the cold. All these things are helping to build the strength of your mitochondria and build the numbers of your mitochondria. And for example, when you're going into the cold, Frequently, it helps you build what's called brown fat. Now, this is not a fat that you will see on somebody. You don't look at a person and say like, whoa, he's got a lot of brown fat. He's got to go work out. No, brown fat is not visible, but brown fat is brown because mitochondria are brown and it has such a high concentration of mitochondria that it actually helps you to burn more calories, burn more fat. And when calories come in, it actually helps them be burnt up as energy before they ever have a chance to be stored away as fat. And last but not least, our old friend apple cider vinegar is also good for improving mitochondrial efficiency. So if you guys do any of these things to optimize your mitochondria, let me know your favorites down in the comment section and what you found to be most effective in terms of your own energy levels and feelings of well-being. And before you go, here's a link to a video that I think you'd enjoy watching next. And there's one the YouTube algorithm thinks you'd enjoy. And there's a link to our website if you want to give black ginger and cordyceps a try. Have a great day and look forward to seeing you all again next time.